recording okay, is started. Thank you. thank you. I appreciate that. Before we begin this hearing, I just would like to share a few logistical um, uh, information on Zoom features and how the meeting will be run. Um, so as we just indicated, um, the meeting is being recorded, and if you please take a minute to uh, make sure you're muted. We ask that everyone remain muted during the hearing to reduce background noise. There'll be an opportunity to provide oral testimony, at which point we will unmute those or allow you to unmute yourself so that you can speak one by one. If you've joined online, please enter your name, affiliation, and email in the chat box located in the chat bar of the Zoom control panel on your computer or at the top right of your mobile device by clicking on the chat bubble icon. If you'd like to testify, please type testify after your name and use the raise hand function of Zoom. If you're having trouble finding the chat box and you can put a computer uh, try clicking on the triangle to the left of the word chat to expand the bar. If you join by phone, uh, after we do the online testimony, we will ask if there's anyone joining by phone and then uh, work with you to uh, allow you to do your oral testimony. Okay, now the hearing will begin. Uh, let me just give you your next uh, slide, which indicates the raise hand function. Uh, raising your hand to uh, uh, give testimony. I'm sure a lot of you are used to that, but maybe some aren't um, as well. So we also ask that you um, limit your testimony to five minutes so that we can have allow everyone uh, to have adequate time to give testimony. So. So the hearing is now open. This is a public hearing for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. My name is Joanne Morin, and I am the hearing officer on this matter. With me in the hearing panel is Michael Woodman. And Michael, is your camera on? Yes. Okay, there we go. We are here today, Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 at 6 p.m. on an online public teleconference to accept testimony concerning the proposed regulation 310 CMR 7.02 uh, in parentheses, section 14 for the cumulative impact analysis. At this time, MassDEP will not be responding to any questions or comments regarding the regulation. If anyone wants to provide comments on this proposed regulation prior to the end of the public comment period on April 7, 2023, and needs interpreter and services, MassDEP provides language services uh, to limited English proficient individuals free of charge. Information about these interpreter and translation services is available on the Mass DEP's website. Mass DEP has proposed uh, these regu draft regulations, 310 CMR, seven, uh, uh, amendments to regulations 310 CMR 7.0, air pollution control to require a cumulative impact analysis or CIA for comprehensive plan approvals for facilities located in or near environmental justice populations. The proposed CIA requirements are contained in a new section, 310 CMR 7.02, section 14, and include enhanced public outreach to and involvement of environmental justice populations, assessment of existing community conditions, and analysis of cumulative impacts. Written testimony will be accepted until 5 p.m. on April 7, 2023. This is the date and the time by which any written comments must be received by Mass DEP. It is not a postmark date. Please submit written testimony electronically to massdep.impact, I-M-P-A-C-T, at mass.gov. Or if you wish to submit written testimony on paper, please mail it to Joanne Morin, M-O-R-I-N, um, at uh, Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, 100 Cambridge Street, Boston, Mass, 02114. Comments sent to any other address may not be received in time to be included in the official docket. 
In a moment, we will begin to un unmute the computer participants who have indicated they wish to provide oral testimony. Once all computer participants who have indicated they wish to testify have done so, we will call on phone participants who wish to testify to identify themselves and ask them to present their oral testimony. As I said earlier, to ensure all those who wish to testify are able, we ask participants to limit their oral testimony to five minutes. Please speak clearly and distinctly. I now open the testimony. So we're gonna look in the chat. So we have uh, Loretta La Centra. If you would like to provide your testimony and you, you may um, also um, um, if you wish show your, your camera, but are you there Loretta? I am, thank you. Okay, great. So there, you should. All right. um, so uh, good evening. Um, thank you so much for um, allowing me to um, submit testimony. Um, I appreciate the hearings um, and your willingness to listen to me and others who live in environmental justice communities. Living where I do in Revere, we bear the burden of multiple sources of pollution that impact our health and our environment. Those sources include, but are not limited to being in the flight path of Logan Airport, being adjacent to Route 1A, which is the main artery for commuters on the North Shore, the General Electric jet aircraft engine facility in Lynn, the wind wheelabrator trash incinerator, and finally their adjacent unlined toxic ash landfill. It's a lot for any community, um, but particularly for us, um, we get it from all angles. Uh, we are overburdened by the cumulative effects of all of these sources. Uh, these EJ laws and regulations are an excellent step in the right direction, but they are only a step. The changes you make to the code of mass regulations must be forceful and strong and reflect the spirit of the new EJ laws. Right now, the wind waste ash landfill I mentioned is looking to expand for another 20 years, even though the mass DEP commissioner Suberg Put them on notice in 2021 that there can be no further expansion as they are situated in the middle of the Rumney Marsh, which is an area of critical environmental concern. This ash landfill is surrounded on three sides by seawater and it stands at 50 feet high. Wind propels their ash containing lead, mercury, cadmium, dioxin, and other toxins into our neighborhoods. The strengthening of the existing regulations to protect EJ communities should stop this expansion in its tracks. This is only one of the things that the EJ community of Revere is assaulted by. I need to know my community matters and that we shouldn't need to shoulder the burden of these polluting industries. Your crafting of these changes should send a strong message that EJ communities matter the changes you make will determine whether we continue to be burdened by additional cumulative industrial pollutions, or we will finally get the relief and the attention that we deserve. Thank you so much for, for listening and for having these hearings. Thank you very much for your comments.
at the moment. I'm not seeing anyone else who's indicated they want to testify. I want to make sure I haven't missed anyone. Yeah, there's um, Cindy, Cindy who, yeah. who who's looks like she's off mute. So, okay, go ahead. Then I'm not seeing that clearly. Hey, okay, Cindy. Thank you. There Good evening. Go. Okay, great. Thank you, Cindy. My name is Cindy Luthi, and I'm the New England Director for Clean Water Action, uh, which is a member of the Environmental Justice Table here in Massachusetts. We're here tonight to comment on the draft regulations for the cumulative impact analysis, which are so very needed to better protect the most vulnerable and overburdened communities in Massachusetts like Revere. I wanted to start out by sharing a story from an earlier campaign I worked on that was pressing for pollution reductions from coal-fired power plants a million years ago. Uh, this is a truly epic battle and uh, there were deep concerns about the soot and smog forming emissions from these plants as well as the air toxics like mercury. The plants were located in Holyoke, in Salem, and in Somerville, I mean Somerset on the uh, Fall River border. And we worked hard to make the case for pollution reductions at all the facilities, but I'm very sure we were helped along by uh, a Marblehead resident who also happened to be a, a wealthy investment banker who was able to get on a phone call directly with the governor at the time. No one from Holyoke or Salem or Fall River had that kind of access for power. These communities had to speak for themselves and you know, there were just no prestigious political donors or power brokers to speak for them. And that is why among other complex factors, this regulation is so important and why the patterns of pollution that burden BIPOC and low-income communities are so entrenched. I know we all know this, but I just wanted to urge DEP to make this regulation as meaningful as possible because the health of residents in these communities that can feel like sacrifice zones deserve to be better protected. We'll be submitting additional comments in writing, but I wanted to make a few significant points um, this evening. The first is that uh, it would be helpful if these regulations could state that approval of a project depends on that project not causing further inequitable public health or environmental burdens. Um, at, you know, reading through the regulations, you know, there, there's, there, there's great content in, in much of the regulation, but I don't believe it states anywhere that uh, projects can and will be denied um, upon a finding of significant public health or environmental burdens or inequitable public health or environmental burdens. And uh, we think that would be a, a critical addition. Also, um, it's hugely important and we really appreciate that much of the information that needs to be gathered for this analysis be qualitative information um, issues like poverty levels and housing insecurity, uh, chronic disease patterns, um, and more. Um, we're, I know regulations and, and policy, we're used to looking at emission levels, um, but there's an interaction here based on the health vulnerabilities and the poverty and the quality of life in these communities that interact so significantly with emissions and pollution levels. And, you know, we very much appreciate that those, those points are included. Um, it's not completely clear what role they play in um, the evaluation. And our sense is that a little bit more concrete um, pathways for that information to be valued um, would be helpful. Um, a few last things, we very much appreciate that there is a built-in regulation review after a few years, because um, uh, this is a, you know, an, an important first regulation uh, starting out here in Massachusetts. And we do think 
it will be um, very positive to you know look at a few years of implementation and then see if there needs to be adjustments or tweaks. And finally, um, I think uh, you can uh, have a sense of this from um, Loretta Lacentra's testimony that we very much support as well uh, the inclusion of existing facilities anticipating major modifications uh, in, in the scope of this regulation. Um, it is not just uh, new proposals that EJ communities grapple with, it's also existing pollution sources. And uh, I think it's, it's um, incredibly effective for existing facilities to, to be included however they can be. Um, ideally, we would also be talking about uh, reducing the existing burdens of pollution in places like Revere or Chelsea or Roxbury, you know, just to name a few communities. So um, thank you for the opportunity to testify and for all the work that's gone into drafting these regulations. Um, we really support the goal of strengthening protections for these vulnerable communities. Thank you. Thank you for your, thank you very much for your comments. Okay, great. And I think we have another commenter, Mary Claire Kelly. I see a, a raised hand. So um, I think that'd be fine. You can go next. Thank you. Um, I want to, my name's Mary Claire. I am an environmental justice and climate justice attorney at Alternatives for Community and Environment in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Um, and I am here to second everything that's been said from our friends in Revere and, um, and what Cindy was just saying. Um, ACE, the organization I work for, is also a member of the EJ table. And we support the comments that Cindy with Clean Water Action just made. As well, I wanted to add that um, that we believe that environmental regulation based on assessment of the risk of harm is a flawed approach. And that's the approach that's being used in these rules. Um, this approach overlooks equity issues. It fails to completely capture the, com the complex health burdens on EJ populations, and it's based on analysis that focuses on how much health damage is allowable. We encourage DEP to move away from this approach and towards a hazard-based approach, which requires preventing harm and improving environmental and public health conditions. Additionally, we believe that this regulation needs to be clearer about what a community engagement process should look like. We support um, we support the addition of more community engagement processes and the intent of these rules and the work that's gone behind them. And it's positive that there are longer comment periods included in this um, so that the public engagement process can be more thorough. Um, however, we we think the rule should include clear guidance and expectations to prevent project proponents from engaging in bad faith. Again, I want to I want to echo that we appreciate the work that DEP has done on this and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. <clears throat> so do we see, and, and uh, Mary Claire, okay, your hand is down, okay. So do we have any other hands up or any other indications in the chat? Mark? Or Mike, do you see any indication of further tests uh, no. testimony? Nope, no, 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 um, no hands are raised, and no one has typed anything into the chat. Okay, we're going to continue to wait um, for another uh, five minutes or so to see if there's anyone else who wishes to, to testify, and also, is there anyone on the phone? Um, who wishes to testify? Is there is there anyone 
um, in the hearing by phone? Uh, yeah, I don't see anybody that has dialed in by phone. Okay. All right, great. I just want to make sure because it's always difficult for them to testify a little bit differently. Okay, we're going to wait five minutes to make sure there, uh, there isn't someone else who wishes to provide testimony. Uh, okay, so we have someone new, Mary Ann Babitsky. I hope I said that correctly. Mary Ann, do forgive me if I uh, said your last name incorrectly. Um, if you want to unmute and provide your testimony, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, since there seems to be some time here to do this, I wasn't going to speak today. I was just uh, going to be on the Thursday one, but I had something come up. So I want to thank the Master EP again, as um, we participated in some of the public hearings that MEPA ran too for something similar to do this kind of outreach to environmental justice communities. So. I quickly read through the amendments that you're offering and I uh, hope that this, my big thing for all of this is, and I've participated in many of, if not all of the stakeholder meetings that MassDEP had and over the last couple of years is that, uh, that we make sure that we do enough meaningful out oversight enforcement and outreach and the outreach I want to stress completely because we've already experienced I'm from Westfield Massachusetts and we have had uh, a couple of projects go through here that had to have a MEPA review and they have also a, a public or a public outreach part to uh, community impact cumulative impact assessment for projects that need a MEPA review. I was not happy with the kind of outreach that was done in that particular case because I think it's got to be a difficult thing. There are so many steps involved in, in this whole process. Is that naming or saying that you're going to do outreach to specific list of community organizations who do this, whether they're regional or a local organization that represents the EJ communities, that that takes care of it because I get very upset with things that end up being documents that look wonderful and all of the language in there is something that we have worked hard for for many years, but I don't want it to become just words on a paper. I'll give you one example is for the MEPA review, uh, one uh, list of organizations that were given to the applicant to use to contact and do outreach before the application that they sent to MEPA, uh, do outreach to those EJ communities, listed maybe two local organizations that could help or assist the EJ communities. And one of them, the ones that were closest to the project were not even ever contacted. Yet the company, the applicant submitted their process and submitted uh, that they did this, that, and the other thing. And I don't know that, and I'm not convinced that many of it took, uh, took place because there were people who were living in those uh, environmental justice communities that did not get uh, contacted. Uh, so I, I don't know how, I think there has to be a stronger involvement from a local government, local communities, local boards, that also will be involved in doing some of these projects or have uh, those uh, applicants appear before them. The local communities or even a regional group should know who there was environmental justice. In Western Massachusetts, we don't have sometimes the numbers of citizens or public outreach, public organizations, grassroots organizations that will help speak and educate the local EJ populations, the people who this is going to impact the most. So I, I'm looking for better outreach, making sure that the outreach is completed, uh, that there's oversight on everything, all the decisions that are made and enforcement to make sure that what we're saying is in writing in on paper 
is actually happening. So I thank you very much for this effort, along with what MEPA has done too. And uh, I hope that we can move forward and actually get some positive results out of this. So thank you for this evening. Thank you for your comments. Marianne, can I ask you what, what is your affiliation? I was a former city councilor. I was also uh, a lead director of Westfield Concerned Citizens years ago. Uh, and I am also uh, affiliated with RAF Westfield residents advocating for themselves. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else who will, I know someone new just joined the hearing. So is there anyone else who would like to give testimony and the, and the, uh, the new people uh, who, who uh, entered the hearing, we, we have heard from, a, from a, a number of people with testimony. Uh, we don't have an indication of further testimony. So if that person who just joined the hearing would like to give testimony, uh, we ask that you indicate it now, either by raising your hand or putting your name and affiliation into the chat indicate and indicate that you want to testify. So, because um, you did not hear the beginning um, of our introduction. So is there anyone else who would like to testify at this time? And we are again, going to wait a few minutes uh, uh, before closing the hearing to make sure that anyone who wanted to testify has the opportunity. <clears throat> Again, we're just waiting a few more minutes, just to a, a minute or two to see if anyone else wishes to testify. We have heard from a number of people. Uh, just indicate by raise, doing the raise hand function or putting your name affiliation into the chat and indicate uh, at that time uh, that you wish to testify. Okay, I'm just going to call one more time. Is there anyone else <clears throat> wishes to testify that hasn't at this time?
Okay, we don't see any raised hands or any indication in the chat that anyone else wishes to testify. So I wish, um, I wanna thank all of you who have testified this evening as well as those who've attended this remote hearing without testifying. All the testimony from this hearing will be considered before Mass DEP finalizes the proposed regulation. After the public hearing closes at 5 p.m. on April 7, 2023, we will review and take under advisement the comments raised during this public hearing period prior to issuing the final regulation um, and, uh, and amendments to um, uh, CM uh, 310.7.0. When the final regulation is issued, it will be posted on Mass DEP's website. We will notify all parties who have participated in the public hearing process when the posting is completed. There being no further testimony, I hereby close this hearing at 6.36 um, on March 7th, 2023. Again, thank you all. Um, for your participation. I hope you have a good rest of your evening.